Hi everyone, I'm Hales and welcome to my channel. Welcome to another Friday series episode where I'm just gonna um, give you a bit of a catch up on what has happened this week sewing wise and bits and pieces. If you want to follow other Friday series, then if you look at the hashtag Friday series up in the search bar up above in YouTube, you'll see there's so many other people going along with Friday series, which was originally started by Jen from today in Jen's sewing room. Now, last week I showed you, I'm just reaching down here, I showed you the Marlowe sweater, which I made by True Bias, and it was far too big. Now, someone did suggest like neatly going along with my embroidery scissors and cutting away and then maybe sizing it down a bit. I was too impatient for that, so I just whizzed it through my overlocker. But in doing so, I have noticed that I went, I was a bit too eager and, um, yeah, so I need to just go over that seam again because the bands were attached to it on the bottom and on the sleeve. I could only sort of start from here and just do sort of like the in between the cuffs and just whip that through. It's still too big. So I feel like this is the kind of cardigan where you put on if you're really cold, which I have been lately, or you're feeling a bit ill or you just want to like cozy up on the city it's not going to be a cardigan that I wear out and about it just feels it feels heavy it feels like there's a lot of fabric going on there and it's sort of like pulling down on my shoulders so it is really an about the house cardigan I did have buttons arrive but I haven't attached them and I was a bit disappointed with the fabric it wasn't a cheap fabric um but and I don't know, it may not show up on here, but basically I made this, I took some photos in it, I wore it for the rest of like an afternoon and it has peeled or bobbled all up the front, all on the inside arms as well, not on the back. So anywhere where there's been movement, it's bobbled like less than a day after it being washed, um, being worn. So I machine washed it at 40 degrees and then I dried it off inside, just draped over an area. So it hasn't been through the temper dryer or anything. But I was really disappointed with that. So I did, I won't say where I got it from, but I did email the shop with photos just sort of saying you know I was a bit I was disappointed in the way that it had worn after literally a day and so she was really nice about it and she emailed me a, a voucher code to order something else in replace of that so I have ordered another I think it's like a grey flat fabric but a different um composition fabric so I'm hoping that then that won't bubble so I should have that next week they haven't dispatched it yet because it's not like an urgent thing but that will be to make another one. But talking of Marlowe's, now last week I did thrust, I did show you a couple of fabrics I wanted to have made up and I have made them. So my grey, I'll put a photo in here. So the grey Marlowe cards again, I made in a straight size 14 and it was huge. And then I realized on the pattern that it said to go by your bust size and not necessarily by your hip size. So what I did this time around, I made a size 12 no, I made a size 10 and then grayed it out to a 12 at the, at the bottom band. I could possibly go to a 14 at the bottom band because when the buttons are done up, it does sort of ride up and I have to like then um, pull it under. But when the cardigan is undone, it feels fine. There's not too much fabric. Now I did order some buttons um, off eBay and the pattern does suggest 30 millimeter buttons. So I got these wooden ones. Hopefully that's going to focus with the sort of the red in them the only trouble is when I went to sew them I couldn't fit the button in my buttonhole foot so I thought well that's fine because there's a way of doing the buttonholes without doing that got my manual out and the biggest button size that my brother does is 28 millimeters so I put the buttonhole foot on and the biggest I could still get it was 28 millimeters so with my buttonholes I have I'm gonna hope they're not gonna rip out and they don't look <laughs> They don't look that neat now I'm looking at them. But I did um, I literally just snipped a bit extra at the top and the bottom so it could go over the button. So, and I have the grey buttons I've ordered, which arrived, that I didn't realise at the time. So they were 30 millimetres as well. So I'm just saying, do double check your machine um, that, that it will sew on the machine a 30 millimetre button. And you might want to just get a smaller one. This, so this one, um, I use my rainbow thread overlocker threads for my overlocker to the insides. It has um, like a quite a fleece, not fleecy, but it's very soft 
um, fluffy on the inside and then almost from the outside it's almost like a sort of ponty knit. It's come out bright red on camera, it's a burgundy sort of colour. And then I did top stitch all around it. You will see it because I'm sitting down at the minute and then there isn't room for it. If I stand up I'm literally in your face. So, so on my monthly makes video at the end of the month you will see that fully on. But that is just so you know that that size down was a lot better. And that if you want to make that Marlo cardigan um, to go by, you'll definitely go by your bust measurement and see how much ease you want because if you go by your hip measurement it's just too big on the top. Now something else, oh yeah, the other fabric that I mentioned last week saying that I want to make it and it would layer with the cardigan was to sew over at Florence dress and I have made it. It's one where I made um, a twirl, put it in here, where the the waistband was rising up at the front so I figured I needed to do a full bust adjustment so I did, and then I've made it in this fabric here. Again, this you'll see this modelled, if you were, if you like, at my February summary video. Now this one, um, I didn't tighten the elastic as much around the waist. I did lose, so you have a bodkin. I have a bodkin that I use to put my elastic in a channel and then I lost it, so <laughs> in the dress. So where the front, so where the front overlaps, Hang on, where is it? So we've got buttons here. So where that front bit goes there, getting through that seam, the bodkin just sort of came out and it was too big and it got stuck. And then I tried to undo it and then it lost the train of the elastic and then the teeth like opened up. And I had real trouble. So I had to open up the seam to try and get it out because I couldn't like follow it all the way back to my original opening. So there's a couple of places where I have got double sort of stitches but you don't really notice it. But I realised that when I originally did it, I pulled my elastic in too high. So when you go like that or reach up for something, the dress comes with you and then doesn't fall down to that and then you constantly have to be adjusting it. So I made it really loose. So I could wear a belt over it. I um, don't have a great selection, don't really have a selection of belts, which I probably need to do something about. But a nice skinny, perhaps brown belt, I think would look really nice over the top. I do like having a belt loop, so I'll see. If I do add a belt, I might put um, a couple of belt loops either side just to keep that in place. The um, the neck opening, it does flop out because you interface like the collar bit, um, but it does, so I have done the buttons up higher than perhaps I would have originally planned because it all kind of sits open. That is the style of the dress, so I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. I'll, that's just what it is. I am yet to hem these. They come to about here. Oh uh, no, they come to sort of here. So they're not three quarter length and they're not full length sleeves. They're a funny length. So I've decided, I did put a poll over on Instagram and everyone, well the majority of people voted to cut them off and hem them at elbow length. And also when I then stand, when they're elbow length, um, the eye is drawn to my waist, which is my smallest part. So I think that is a bit of a more of a flattering shape and then draws your eye in so it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a sort of a big bulky dress because when you have gathers and things, sometimes it can sort of feel that there's a lot of fabric there. I also need to shorten it. It's quite long. Um, it's not a maxi length on me and I think it's perhaps like a midi length which I don't think on my height is probably the best um, thing so I'm not sure and I might have to get the old hem chalk hem marker out um, and just to mark that round just to get an even hem because I'm, I'm not confident enough that with viscose that I will be able to get just a straight hem by cutting it and the other thing which for next time, I did a half inch narrow shoulder adjustment, but I do feel it needs to take an inch because the shoulders do sort of sit down a bit. And um, when I sort of go like that, the armhole needs raised. So I think if I shortened like that, so if I shortened the shoulder a bit more, that would hoik it up a bit. But um, all in all, that's quite an easy, it's an easy to sew, it went together quite quickly. It just needs a couple of fitting modi modifications when you do make it for your size. 
because I've seen quite a few people where it does ride up at the front. So that's just something to bear in mind. But other than that, it seems like a quite nice dress to wear and to make for springtime and for summer you do that with shorter sleeves or you probably just do that without the sleeves and that would be nice and light and airy so I think it's definitely one I would go back to and certainly for winter time made in a dark fat and a black sort of fabric with tights and things I think that would look really nice again I will show you the full um, view and everything in my roundup video now the next thing well the, the last thing that I made this week was this and it's called the Felicia sweater and if you've watched my Chloe jeans review which is my last video I'll put that down in the description of the box below you'll see what this looks like on you have a sneak peek but this is from mood fabrics not the fabric itself but the actual pattern and this is because I'm taking part in the frugal frocks challenge for 20 frugal frocks 2021 run by Ruan from the Yorkshire So Girl and Sam from Frugalissima. I'll put the channel down below and you can see all the details there. But we want everyone to join in with this challenge for March where you make a dress out of a free pattern and fabric that you already own. So I thought I would do my research and I will be bringing out a video about my plans and fabric choices and things over on my channel on the 2nd of March. That is due, I haven't filmed that yet. But as part of my research, I found that Mood Fabrics over in America, they have free patterns on their website. And I didn't know what the sizing was going to be like. So I had this, which was a French terry, which I got from Beyond the Pink Door. And I had one and a half meters of it. And I was going to make just that simplicity sweater that I've made before. And I thought, and it was so cold last weekend. The snow was still hanging around. It was just icy, it was just really cold and icy. And in the conservatory here, it's just, it felt cold and shivery. And I think I did have that gray cardigan wrapped up. And I thought, I just want something a bit more cozy to wear. So I found this and I thought, well, actually I have the fabric and um, it, had, like, it was really easy to print out. So I just, it's literally just like the front is on the fold, the back is on the fold. There are no extra cuffs or bands. There's literally just that neck piece. And I did shorten it by about one centimeter because I felt it, it was like originally right up there. So I cut it out and then I just like trimmed off like the width of it. So then it sat down a bit lower. And honestly, it was so cozy to wear last week. And I, I thought it was a good experiment to see what their sizing and what the patterns are like before going for something like a dress or something a bit more involved. Now their instructions are quite minimal. They're literally written within a blog post. So you kind of need to know what you're doing. I mean, with this one, you know, if, if you've made a t-shirt, then that's easy enough to do. You know what you're doing, it's fairly straightforward. But yeah, so I imagine if you've got the dresses and things like that, then um, it might be a bit more tricky to work out and some of them don't necessarily give you or they don't think they give you finished sizes so they'll just tell you your measurements and then you kind of just make it up so that's just one thing to bear in mind but there are all sorts of patterns out there on their site and they're free so from loungewear to nightwear to dresses and jackets and coats and the good thing about their website or their sort of sewing patterns is that they are pictured on people of all different sizes. Now some of the latest releases I think because they came out when there was a strict lockdown over in I think they're based in New York so when there was the strict lockdown the designers weren't able to then take photo shoots of the dresses and the items on people so some of the recent ones they are just on dressmakers dummies so but that normally they would take them on real people and they do have people of all shapes and sizes so I found that encouraging that um someone who's a bit more curvy that they do cater for that so that I was really pleased that and honestly that took maybe an hour from printing out and made it and then it was done so I really encourage you to do that also if you hop over to Instagram and have a look at um who is taking part there's different vloggers who are going to be talking about it every day right through the end of this month and right through to March just to kind of um, pique your interest with ideas of patterns and things and actually I think it's a really good thing to regardless you want to take part in the challenge just to have a look and see what's out there to try out some new designers the Chloe jeans that I made last week although they're trousers not jeans I discovered a couple of people messaged me and said that the, the designer is five foot nine and that is who she sort of designs for I'm five foot three and so that explains why 
each section of my sort of trousers was all bunched up and why they were really big because they were supposed to be a cropped jean and I had no idea so I don't know if it's hidden on her if it mentions it on her site whether it's like hidden information but as she was a new designer to me I had no idea that she catered for taller people so it is always worth bearing in mind who the pattern companies sort of base their sort of general measurements on and they usually have like a sort of standard height on that kind of thing so it has made me return to trousers once again you're probably sick of me hearing this and so last night one of my viewers she contacted me and said that she would actually have some ideas of why i had all this excess fabric at the back of my trousers and we had a facetime and a really nice chat and so now i think that it's her solution is going to work i will keep you posted and i will probably do a separate video about that but this weekend i hope to find some sort of scrap fabric to work on to work out the adjustment that she suggested to see if it works so i won't say anything else until i've actually fully tried it but i will keep you posted on that one so other than working on trousers i don't really have any plans for this week sewing wise so i'm not really sure this is the end so it's friday i'm actually filming on friday so i need to sort my life out and get it edited and uploaded today but yeah it's the end of half term this week we haven't been anywhere because obviously lockdown if we're in shut so the normal places we'd go or you know go to the beach if it's warm sometimes in february it's been warm go out for lunch go to the cinema can't do any of those things at all so we have been inside half feeling about fed up this week um, so I'm hoping that next week that things will sort of get a bit back to normal, the kids will be back into homeschool, a bit more structured to the day. I only have, um, if the government are sticking to track, I guess I'll find out probably Monday, but I only have, at the minute, as far as I know, I only have two weeks until schools go back, which means then I'm back at work. So I'm not sure how I'm going to keep up a Friday series. I may continue, I may take a break. I may turn into something else so if you subscribe to my channel you'll be up to date with what's going on and as and when because sometimes I like to shake things up and just change my filming schedule please hit the like if you haven't been completely bored and I'll see you again next week